Howdy folks. Sorry, we had a bit of a few teething issues. Um, my broadband's really weird. If you don't restart it for a while, it just goes. It's just crap, basically. Um, and then you try and restart it, and it takes forever to start up. And I've been trying to work out how to get it to start up faster. It's really quite tricky. There's a combination of things that need to be done. I think one of the issues may be because we're running another router off it that um, when it restarts, I think it's being constantly pinged by other router, and I think that interferes with it in some way. So I tried disconnecting that. It seemed to connect a bit faster. Hi, I post. Um, but anyway, it's back up now. It's good, and we're green across the board, so that's that's nice. I mean, it was literally zero kilobytes per second, maxing out at seven and six hundred, very briefly, and then back to zero and back to zero. It was rubbish. Um, yeah. Oh, so I post said um, saw your excellent Yosis HQ interview. Didn't know Xmos. Let me get a link for that because yeah, some people might not have seen that already. Um, yeah, they were. It was nice to speak to Matthew. I hadn't spoken to him in a while. Um, it was good of them to ask me to. Um, I'm only the second people they've interviewed. The first one was Olaf. You should watch that as well. Uh, Olaf does a lot for the Fossey and Orkomp and things like that. So, yeah, I did make a few mistakes, which Laurie pointed out and corrected me on down at the forum. Uh, a mix-up with the acorn atom and the electron. Oops. I should bloody know I was around then. Mind you, I wasn't that much into the beeb at the time. I was into my ZX80s. Um, Oh, what are we going to do today? We have to cover any news. Has anyone got any news? Please let me know. Uh, the first one I wanted to talk about, you may have noticed if you were here earlier, the picture that we had on startup was for Black Ice. Why am I talking about Black Ice? Because, 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 because of the wonderful things it does. Look what I have. We've made up some more uh, black ice boards. They've been out of stock for a while. Apologies for that. Um, there was a couple of issues. Oh, look, focus. Very good. Uh, a couple of issues getting these made. Uh, I say getting them made. Um, I'm the one that makes these. These are all made here by myself. And one of these has, um, let me think. 30, 30, 30, 90 and 20, 620, 116 solder joints on this that I have to do. Um, so, as well as the surface mount thing. So it's a two pass process. I do the surface mount things and then, uh, then I have to manually solder them. Uh, but I had a problem with my soldering iron. It's getting worse and worse and worse. And I just got to the point where it was just pointless trying to use it to do anything. And then I ordered a new soldering iron. Uh, you can see here. Ta -da. It's a JBC. I've wanted one of these for a long time. And I managed to get the analog one. You know, with the analog control rather than the newer one with the digital dials. Because I kind of prefer the analog control. It's just easier. Rather than fluffing about pressing buttons every time you want to get it to the temperature that you want, I just you just set it, it's easier on the dial. But anyhow, I ordered this a while ago so I could get the boards done, but the only place I could get the one with the analog um in fact let me see if I can find that. Uh what are they called? Hold on, let me look in my history. 
I'll tell you where I got it from because it's very difficult to get hold of them. The UK distributor, the official distributor, doesn't do the old analog ones anymore and haven't done it for a while. They only do the new ones. Um, but I, I managed to find um, some availability. If I do a search here on JBC soldering station. Uh, these guys. Let me share my browser so you can see what I'm talking about here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's go to here. Let's just turn on my boozer. Oh, why is that not showing up? Um, hold on. Not picking it up. There you go. So I the these guys had it. Uh, L Shop, and I was recommended by someone on Twitter to try these guys. Um, and they still list it as you can see here uh, it's actually quite a good deal I think but um, the problem with it is <sighs> since Brexit it's been a nightmare getting anything from Europe to the UK and it took weeks and weeks and weeks uh, to get it and it seemed to go all the way around Europe before it got here as well and it went via UPS in the end, and they were just shite. I don't know what they were playing at. They didn't know what they were doing, where it was. One day it was here, the next day it wasn't. They said it was going to be delivered, then it wasn't, and it was just a nightmare. Um, but I did eventually get it, and it's excellent. Highly recommend it. Yes, it's expensive. It's more than I've paid for a soldering iron before, but I think it's well worth it. It is fantastic. It was a pleasure to do the soldering with this. Um, I may just be saying that because my old soldering iron just got so crap. But um, yeah, it's uh, I'm really pleased with that actually. So um, yes, rather pleased. So having got that, I actually managed to, you know, I've got a whole bunch of these. I've got several stacks of these. Uh, done. So the other thing I've got to do is what's really popular. Nearly everyone buys the uh, breadboards adapters when they buy black ice. So I'm building a. In case you haven't seen these, I'm building some more of those as well because um, I know I'm going to need some. And as soon as I get those done, come on, focus, focus. As soon as I get some of those done, then um, uh, I will uh, put some stock in uh, on the Tindy store so that people can buy them. Um, so that's good news. People have been hassling me about that. Um, so that's that one, which is quite interesting. I have tea. I post says uh, uh, almost seems easier with a solder pooling device. You mean a wave solder? I really wanted to buy a wave solder, but I couldn't locate one. You know, like a second-hand one or something. They're really difficult to get hold of now, and they cost a fortune new. To go wave solder, you've got to make a reasonable quantity if you want a third party to do it, because they're going to charge you. Um, but it's the kind of thing that you could operate, a small wave solder. 
Um, but yeah, that wasn't available to me. So I use the old iron. Uh, I'm pretty good, pretty fast. I've been doing it for, I don't admit how many decades. Um, but yeah, it does help if you have a soldering iron that works in the first place, of course. My old one was a Heiko. Uh, I can't remember the FX9, is it 993 or whatever it is? Very popular one. It was quite good when I bought it, but um, yeah, it just kind of went downhill and I got through a lot of tips and it just, just was not cutting the mustard towards the end. But this thing, wow, just makes mince meat. Heats up like that. Um, what else have we been doing this week? I got a jab today. My first vaccination. No side effects apart from a little bit of a sore arm. AstraZeneca. No thrombosis, thank goodness. Uh, so that's cool news. Finally. We are still in lockdown. Hence, still. Won't be able to do anything about that until... Uh, the next couple of weeks I shouldn't think when they open the hairdressers or the babies. Um what else have been I've been doing? I've been doing some more work on amalgam, made some changes on that. I need to cover that in a separate um that's probably worth a stream in itself. I'm not gonna do that right now. Um I've been thinking about the robotics thing. I think I've got a reasonable plan for that. That's going to be interesting. But again, I'll do that separately. Um, I think what I wanted to do today was just do a bit more of the um, programming stuff. Um, news items. Was there any news items that we need to cover? Oh, hi, Laurie, by the way. Sorry, I didn't see your your message there. Um, were there any items that you you guys particularly wanted to cover do let me know and by the way um on the last stream what i think we were working on was getting the master clock out operational to drive the FPGA because we provide the clock to the FPGA from from the STM32 and normally that's done via the master clock out function which is a nice function that the STM32 is out that, that literally routes you know one of the internal system clock lines through a buffer out through a particular pin um, but normally you've got two choices unless it's a small package then you only get one choice of pins so that's a, quite a cool thing to do. What we couldn't do is select what that clock was. So even though we enabled the alternate function on the pin, um, and that surprisingly enabled the clock to output, uh, we couldn't set up the clock section for the master uh, control output to select what its source was or whether it was dividing it, etc. So we ended up um, I think Laurie calculated that the clock was about 16 megahertz or something, um, whereas it should be about 25 megahertz. Certainly on the black eyes, it should be 25 megahertz. I did look into it. Um, it's pretty tricky stuff. It seems to vary a bit by different um, STM32. Um, the H7 has some support, strangely enough, but the F7 does not so i haven't found an easy solution to that yet but i'm going to keep um working on that and investigating that i may be able to backport some of the um h7 stuff possibly although it's likely to be slightly different of course the registers will be there because they're part of the svd description and the basic STM32 uh, F7 library is derived from the SVD uh, file. They use an SVD 
rut to rust um, automatic conversion which maps all the registers defined in the XML file that uh, ST provide in an SVD format it maps it to a register structure that can be um, uh, wrapped you know with a standard S STM32 wrapper and then the how can be wrapped around that so the registers are there but the um, the setup um convenience functions etc the definitions in the hal itself for default configuration things are not set up and i know that because i just i looked over the week at the h7 which does have it and there's quite a lot of code in the mco control part for the h7 so i'd imagine it'd be a similar amount in the uh, f7 because it's doing the same thing effectively might be some subtle differences but it, it's going to be more or less the same so um, I don't yet have a solution for that but we do have a clock coming out which is good um, I don't see any other news items I should just check my um, feed actually hold on can I see anything here that I need to cover Uh, hold on. I saw this was very cool. Nothing to do with FPGAs. It's more on the robotic side, but this was kind of cool. I've not seen this before. So you may well have seen um, these things before. Um, I've forgotten the name now. Um, uh, Macarnum wheels, is it? Macarnum wheels. Um, well, this robot use, seems to use like Macarnum tracks. So it's kind of cool. It can kind of go sideways if you watch it carefully. And I thought it was really interesting. I don't know how efficient these would be, though. Whether that ends up being a lot less efficient, but it just looks kind of cool the way it can go sideways like that. An interesting idea. What else did we have that I picked up that I just wanted to mention? Um, oh yeah, to add to the chip silicon woes, looks like Austin chip production is also down because of their water outages. Nightmare. Um, it was interesting. An RF chip um, as part of the one of the Skywater Foundry projects that was submitted. Which was interesting. Uh, was there anything else on here I wanted to cover? Um, I think we covered these last week. Uh, Gatecat was doing some more work on the NX cores for uh, Project Oxide, which is what, what will support those new cores from Lattice. He's got more of that stuff working, which is kind of cool. I'm looking forward to that, although you can't buy the damn chips at the moment. A uh, real problem with supply. So yeah, that was the only news that I had of any significance. So if you guys haven't got any more of that, what we should do is probably just move into um, the uh, code. So let's get the browser. So what should we do on the code today? I had a real dilemma thinking about this earlier. Um, let's turn the browser off, hold on. Let's 
So if you remember where we were last time, uh, we got the programming working and the next step is really to um, to probably do the flash. So in other words, to be able to write to the flash. I think that's probably the next step. That we should take. Um, we do have some issues. One thing in my head that I've been fighting with is how on earth do we share those pins? In C it doesn't matter, you can do all sorts of crap and get away with it, but in, in Rust it strikes me as an issue, you know, where we've got pins that um, that are going to be used as as a bit banged set. Then we also want the same pins to be used under an SPI peripheral. So that's been I've been trying to think of a way I can make both of these work together because of the weird way that I've designed black ice in the past because of where the flash is and sharing the lines. Um, so in one way I. I couldn't think of an easy way around this unless someone comes up with a good idea. I don't want to end up, excuse me, going down that avenue and getting stuck and not making any progress this evening. That's what I'm trying to avoid. So um, what I'll probably do is just work on the flash site. But what we're going to do will be slightly different. And I'll come back to that in a sec. Laurie's saying, um, did you look at reusability? A second config failed. Ah, yes, I do need to solve that. Um, what was that problem? Let me think. We had to, it's because we need to be able to do run this part twice, effectively. Or at least this part. You probably don't need the first part or the second part. Probably only need these parts um, so what we could do is we could turn that I'm just wondering can we turn that into a function to turn it into a function we'd need to pass in a function uh, these pins and then have it do that but that function would also need to be accessible from here. Okay. And at the moment we're calling send. So there is a bit at the end here. Where we... Um, so if we hit the byte count, we go and do some cleaning up after ourselves, but we don't go through the resetting. Um, the resetting probably needs to occur, I guess, when we see this, maybe. It has to occur at the start, not the end, for the simple reason of we want the FPGA to run until such point that we've reprogrammed it. So that's the first issue. Okay, so we could tackle that. That's certainly a possibility. Um, or we could tackle right into the flash, or we could do a bit of both. <laughs> but for this, to be able to call those pins, is going to be tricky. I mean, another way of maybe looking at that would be that those pins don't belong in main here because we're not actually using them in main. We could move those pins over. I mean, we've got the SS pin. We've got a delay. 
what we don't have is the reset pin uh, that's all so we need to add we need to pass in the uh, the reset pin then we can do it I think don't need anything else to be because we've already got SS let me just double check what do we pass in here we pass in SCK mozzie SS delay so yeah we just need to pass in the um, uh, reset pin because we're not going to be changing in this instance the um, right protect on the flash or the hold on the flash those are just going to stay the same although what we do in the current firmware let me think about this in the current firmware after we've programmed it we release the uh, WP and hold um, in case the FPGA needs to access them Um, so maybe they would need to be passed in as well. That doesn't, however, solve our problem of having the SPI use those pins unless we dynamically create the SPI device and then drop it I'm not sure if that's the right term in um, in rust because the SBI uh, structure or um, wrapper whatever it is will need to hold those pins and it can't hold them presumably at the same time that we're bit banging so if we wanted to go to SPI, we'd have to pass them in. Or we'd have to reconfigure them into their alternate modes. Which we're not doing at the moment. They're being passed in, configured, just to simple GPIOs, aren't they? Um, let's just remind ourselves. Uh, yes, they're all configured as just straight GPIO pins. I don't think we can easily reconfigure them either because uh, when we do this, we get a type. That type is related to how these are set up. If we were to put these in alternative modes, uh, the type they're going to return is going to be different. I think. And that's going to mess with us again. This is, in fact, a bit of a nightmare. Because we're using their types here. Damn! Oh! This is so nightmarish. Because it's on the same pins as the flash. But we want to use a different peripheral. Mmm! How would we be able to do that? I mean, it doesn't matter on amalgam because we don't have that problem. They're separate pins. The flash pins and the SPI programming pins are different pins. Um, 
that is frustrating. It's going to be a tricky problem to solve. And can you reconfigure pins? That's the other thing. Is there like a drop? Or something so if I take something like uh, what am I going to take SCK right SCK dot into alternate yes yeah, so I can swap functions so I convert it into alternate F0 mode or F10 or F1, then doing so that returns PB3 but with alternate AF0 or alternate AF10, so it would be changing the type. So we couldn't have that um, owned by the structure as is right now. Or could we? Hmm. I mean, could we? What would happen if you did that? Is it gonna? Is it gonna? Is it gonna feel a wobbler, so to speak? I mean, if it was in this function here, no. We do set up here. So I receive SCK here. So could I go SCK into whatever alternate function? Or maybe this isn't set up. Maybe this is called something else. What would happen if we had another function? Hold on. I don't, oops. I don't think this is going to work. Let me just try and write a bit of code and see what it actually says. I'm probably going to complain bitterly. But say we had a function, right? Pub uh, function spy to convert it into spy and what that would do is oh, that would somehow convert what we had oh, what would that return Uh, how about returning nothing? Like that. And then here we do, well, hold on. We need this. So we need to go self dot sck into alternate, but where would I store that? Well, let's just say SCK let mat SCK equals something like that. Uh, 
Yeah, so that now returns something called a PB3, which contains an alternate AF0. I'd have to store that in the structure so would I need a separate structure to do that <coughs> I'm just going to actually um, save this and then do a build because I'm intrigued to see what it actually says about this whether it throws a wobbler or not. Damn it. That's my history here for some reason. saying I don't need to mutate it because I'm not mutating it okay uh, unused variable Okay, does it say anything else here? Cannot move out of... Yeah, this is what I was worried about here. So before I do anything with this, the issue I've got here is, look, it's complaining here. Cannot move out of self.sck, which is behind a mutable reference. it doesn't implement a copy trait <sighs> let me try something else can I do this use a wild card for these types I've got a feeling it will not have that. So what does it say now if I try that? Obviously, it doesn't like these other calls to it in its old format. Hold on. Expect it. Yeah, it doesn't like that. You, yes, I've got no get out of jail free on that particular damn see what I'm trying to say here is this is always a PB4, right? Oh, in fact, 
let's just swap these around and do it on the wrong one look. should be using a CK it will still complain about the same thing anyhow but see what it says but I think it's going to say the same thing yeah it doesn't it doesn't like so what I'm saying here is this this is like a don't care what type it is I'm trying to put the flexibility in because it may be output push pull or it may be uh, alternate I was trying to get a type here that was both But I can't do it that way. It is expected one of comma colon. I mean, you can use these um, void or wild, but they're not wild cards. They're void type, void types. Okay, let me just take my um, hoodie off a little bit. Let's have a think. I mean, the question that we're trying to work out here is how can we have a type that is happy supporting the push pull output or the alternate mode? the same pointer effectively in the struct or the same storage part of the struct can hold the pin irrespective of which mode it's in this is one of the other frustrating things about the way these GPIOs are arranged they don't make this sort of thing easy unless there's a trick I'm missing that enables you to do that. Hmm. Clearly, that isn't going to work. So, That is rather annoying. Any ideas, anyone? Let's come back round to that. Uh, let's put a function in here. Let's add those other pins in as well for the moment. Yeah. So what we want is we wanted to add the reset, wasn't it? Just so that we can solve this reprogramming problem. Let's do that first whilst we have a think. SS delay. So we also need in here uh, reset. At least we can be doing something useful whilst we're thinking about this. Uh, what is the pin? It's not PD2, it's uh, PC13.
if we need to add two here. Oh, this is getting um, big, man. Let's just clean this up a bit. in there and then um, we need to add it in the um, creation here and we also need to pass it in here Uh, let's just comment that out for the moment. Otherwise, it's going to cause a problem. Oh, damn it. Every single time I will get used to this keyboard. Ah, what? Let's just leave that out. We can come back to that in a minute. Um, so I can add a function here, which is basically um, reset. Well, is it reset? It reset. Is that what we want to do? I don't think we need to return anything actually. Let me just see what Laurie's saying. Did you look at the uh, what type is GPIOBSCK? Can't you pass that into a function and then do the interpolation? Interjunction. Haven't tried it. Um, let me have a look in a sec. Let me just get this first. So effectively, what we want is we want all of this. Oops. effectively don't need that there and we'd have it in this function here and we need to oh, is that right And we need to precede that with self. Don't we? Uh, 
I've uh, just overwritten the D on there. Doodly do. So before we um, do this, we need, where do we call setup? Oh. Uh, we can't call it here like that because that's like a static call. Um, I know. Oh, I know. I know what we need to do. We need to call it in here. I think so. We go to poll. What do we do? No, 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 no. SS set low, head asset force, and fine. So we only need to do it here, don't we, really? So we kind of need to call it there, right? I guess that's where we need to call it. I wonder if that will actually compile. Let's have a quick look. No. No. All right. Should it be self? S. S should be the thing that we're calling it on, right? And why is it complaining here? Hold on. What it does not like. Bam. I missed a semicolon or something with crap loads. Uh, SCKP. Oh, God, I've still got that bug in. Sorry. Being an idiot. We'll come back to that in a minute. PC13 not found in the scope. Ah, oh, we have to include that, don't we? Um, where did we have the others? Oh, it should be like that, shouldn't it? The, what it should be is, it should be This PC 
one three semicolon and that is what it should be called here uh, Oh, that should be C. Being an idiot. Okay. Pilot. Uh, reset PC 13 found in the scope. No. What? Didn't I just change that? PC 13. Save. Oh, oh, I did it more than once. I did it here as well. Look, This does not need to be mutable. 225. Didn't we solve this last time? Am I getting backwards here? Is there anything else? It doesn't need that to be mutable. Doesn't need that to be mutable. Or that. Or that. That's what they're complaining about. Doesn't need that. To be mutable. Doesn't need that to be mute mm. mutable and it doesn't need that to be mutable oh i forgot one <laughs> it's trying to read it now. It won't succeed because I don't have open OCD running yet. I should probably do that. Hold on, let me get a PowerShell up. Should run now. Times out. Just click that again. Okay. So we're up and running. Then I need to. Um, what do I need? I need a Linux kernel. I need Ubuntu. In this case, a WSL. Hold on. I need to send it the correct um, set it up. Ah, I also need to run putty I just remembered. Bear with me, folks. Okay, programming the board. And it's running. Right, let me see if I can program it again. Programming the board. And running. 
Right, that seems to have solved that problem. Uh, so before we move on, let me just um, uh, Refactor the FPGA reset. So it happens within the USB serial structure. Dynamically. Right, commit and push. Try this your end, Laurie, as well. Hold on. Commit and push. Push. Uploading. That's done. Try just try downloading that lorry before we do anything else and make sure that um, you can reprogram on yours as well. <clears throat> and then we can look at this um, other issue. Just give me a sec, folks. Just going to take a quick refill of the water break. I should be back in a few moments. So Laurie's saying, um, I'll just wait. Laurie, are you going to try quickly try and make sure that reprograms on your end as well before we move on, mate? I'm not sure that's going to work, um, sorry, because if the type is PB3 input floating, that's still the wrong type. In fact, that's the wrong type for both. Um, both modes that we want to use. Sorry, I keep leaning forward. I forget. Um, and then I go off camera or oh, chop my head off. It's really cool that I've got no side effects from the vaccine. Some people do. I was talking to the guys there. Uh, some people do have quite strong side effects. Apparently, if you're younger, the chance of you having side effects are greater. 
than if you're older. So, no, 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 youngsters. I mean, I barely even, there's a little bit of a ache because it actually goes into your muscle, this vaccine. It's the AstraZeneca one that I had. But all very painless. I highly recommend it. Assuming I don't drop, you know, dead or something in the middle of this stream. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. So if GPIOSCK is PV3 input floating, input floating type is different than the type that we want for either bit banging, excuse me, or um, alternate AFX, whatever that is. I mean, what we may be doing on this on the black ice mx is somewhat unique in that we're switching modes i know you can do that in the stm hal and c easy enough but it may be a little unusual though so laurie says yes it works for me that's good so we've got that sorted anyhow at least before we move on to the other thing um did you hear what i said laurie that i don't think changing it to gpiob.sck is going to help because the type that that represents is pb3 input floating which is neither of the types remember the struct has to hold that type um, you can presumably pass it in any mode and then do the into function you want well, I could. So, for example, uh, on the setup function, yeah, I could have any type here, right? And then I could do into before passing it into here. But whatever the type was here, would have to be the, this type that, that it's set out in the structure itself. And once you've done that, how do you then... switch it to a different type? A new variable. Now I already tried that. I already tried that, Laurie. I tried setting it not to a new variable in the structure. Just set a new variable with the type you need each time you use it. I, that, that's what I tried. I, did you miss that bit? So I was doing a function uh i'll repeat it just so that you can see what i'm talking about so say i have this function right uh i call it spi but i mean it could be called anything um and what that does is exactly what you're talking about yeah so here what i do is i create a new local sck in this case right uh, and I make that equal to, um, hold on, I need to have this here, self dot s c k, yeah, into alternate AFO, right? 
create a local. Forget returning it back to the struct for the moment. Even if I just do that to just maybe temporarily use it in the function, for example, it complains that it, it, there is no copy constructor for that. So that I can't actually do that. I'll show you what I mean. Just so that you can see exactly where I'm coming from here. So if I now compile with that, what it does, it complains about that. Because it says here, um, here. Well, first of all, it complains that it's an unused variable. Fair enough. Um, but this is the key one here, look. It thinks that I'm trying to move this. It says move occurs because self.sck has type mm -mm 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 -mm, which does not implement the copy trait. And I can't you I don't think I can do this. So if I say self dot sck equals that then it then I've got a type problem. I've got a mismatch type problem, right? So if I do that, expected struct output found struct alternate. Yeah, so I can't do that. I don't think I can just do this either to convert it in place, right? So if I do that, says move occurs because self.sck has type mm -mm 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 -mm. I don't think you can clone because it doesn't allow you to have two of these at once because they refer to the same registers the reason it doesn't have a copy is to prevent you doing that I think I'm wondering if you have to do something like drop it first and then make it something else. I don't know if we have that actually. South dot uh, SCK. Is there a drop? No. Downgrade. I don't know what that is. So you can actually change something. It's just, but where do you store the damn thing? The other thing is, if I do manage to change this, I get all sorts of knock-on effects because it will then complain that in my send, I'm trying to use not send, but it, it, yeah, in my send that I'm trying to use this as a bit bang ping when actually it's um, it's an alternate function. Or a reference. Do you mean pass it into USB serial constructor or setup as a reference? Is that what you're suggesting? The type is still going to be the same. It's not like pointers in C. The reference type will still be different. This is a conundrum that I was thinking about because it's almost like we're trying to do something that it doesn't support here. And well, possibly there is, Laurie, but I'm not sure what it will be. Um, the fact that you seem to be able to change this when you, you know, if it's in one thing and you do into alternate here, it seems to suggest that there's some way of changing the mode of a pin, right? Um,
But as soon as we do that, it seems to think that we're copying it. I haven't seen a single example, I don't think, where we've where they've actually changed the mode during runtime. Although it suggests that you can do it, but I haven't because it's got this function. You know, you wouldn't want it. Why would you want to use that unless you were changing it at runtime, right? So um, what you're thinking is mutt let, hold on, let, is it at mutt? Is that what you're thinking? Is that the kind of thing you're thinking? Do I have to do at here as well? Do I have to? Oh, no. Um, what am I doing? No, something like that. Is that what you were thinking? That sort of thing. And whether that actually means anything. Let me try and compile with that and see what it says. Mismatch types. This expression has type ref pb3 alternate da 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 da. Types differ in mutability. So, um, Just, just fix it. Hold on. Help. <laughs> if this is intentional, prefix it with an underscore. Yeah. Okay. Cannot move out of shared reference. Yeah, it doesn't like that. It says cannot move out of self.sck, which is behind a mutable reference. And then it also has the same issue in move occurs because self.sck has type pb3 output push pull, which does not implement the copy trait. So you've still got the other issue underneath as well, reference or not. In an object oriented system, it would just simply be, you know, you'd use a base class, right? To hold the structure, uh, to hold the pin. But because these are what they call zero size types and they are individual, there isn't a common type hierarchy. There's a trait that's common, but you can't use a trait here because it doesn't have a size and it needs to size this because it's static at compile time. Remember all of that stuff? Uh, 
Um, hmm. I mean, we won't need this for any of the newer boards. It's not going to be a problem. But it is a problem if we wanted to do this on the um, current MX board, right? But, you know, we could be thinking about it totally wrong in the first place. What if the pins weren't anything to do with USB serial? And what USB serial did was pass data to something else that then did this. Could we have two something else's? One of which was the SPI, one of which was the bit bang. But neither existed at the same time. It was either one or other, depending on mode. So you have to dynamically create them. But you'd have to separate it out from the USB serial in order to do that. Because you'd physically recreate these items each time. Um, there's a link here. Let's see what this says. So what's this? Recommendations for GPIO interfaces. Pin types are zero size by default. Um, where do I need to go at the end of that? The last example here. Last example on the page, you mean. Let's have a look. Yeah, so what that's doing is that's showing you how you build the how inside. So if you look in the um, STM32F7 how, it follows these guidelines and it creates them this way. That's not how you use them outside of the how. That's how you actually do the implementation inside. And it doesn't give us an example, I don't think, of changing that. So in it... so. Inside, you have these zero size types. Sorry, I'll bring these the browser up because you can't see that, can you guys? Forgive me, I forgot. Turn the browser on so that you can see what we are looking at here. So, in here, you've got these strange things here. These are zero size type structs. The HAL is full of these things. Um, and then you have these. So things like input state, etc. These are traits. They're not physically sized things. Um, and there you have these different behaviors. So this is showing you how it's constructed inside the HAL. It's not showing you how you bring them into being. Does it say anything about using those? I mean, they're extremely complicated when you dive deep into them. You need like a flipping advanced rocket badge in Rust to understand what's going on inside some of the house stuff. Uh, pin state should be bound to sealed traits. Users of how should not need to add their own state. The traits can provide how specific methods required to implement pin state API. So when they say example here, they mean example of how to write it inside the how, not how to use it. Um, what else you got? Let's have a look. Some people have expressed interest in a trait like this for writing generic LCD drivers. A 
pin that can switch between input and output modes at runtime. There are some concerns about whether these traits can actually be implemented for all possible scenarios. Given that switching the mode of any pin on, say, a GPIO A usually requires a read, modify, and write operation on some control register, thus the pins need exclusive access to the control register switching modes. This limits you to a single context of execution, though, because RefSo is not sync, which means da 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 da. But you can recover the sendness. I don't think it's quite common to switch pin between reading and writing. However, often this is the ability to try state a pin. I'm just reading through this, guys and girls and non binary um, folks. I think closure based API places significant limitations on when you change pin direction or function by the looks of it. Is an API required? Implicit API requires exclusive ownership, which is somewhat limiting. With result based API, I wonder what would be the realistic check in. I strongly dislike automatic mode switching variant. Oh yes, yeah, sorry, gate cut play. I forgot. My bad. Uh, how long is this thread? 
<laughs> We're only halfway through, shit. Uh -huh. So what happens in the end? <laughs> see what happens when it this still hasn't been resolved. Can we consider adding this API finally, or at least adding it and marking it unstable or gating it? See, they're showing into input, into output there. So at the end he says, I don't think it's listed here. But I know that the into functions are there. Yeah, it used to be simple, Laurie. It's not now. Um, but again, I don't know how to use it. I mean, the fact that we have this function here, into, suggests to me that you can change a pin into something else. The question is, how do you move it from one storage unit to another without breaking the damn thing? Because obviously you're going from one type to another. Um, so somehow you need to deallocate it from one thing to another. Right, it's pretty tricky. Um, where I tell you what, let's do a search on um, Um, oh, I need to add something to that. Is it GPIO or something?
I think the problem is the structure is still holding on to the pin of that type and we'd have to get it to let go before we did this. And given that the USB stuff is hooked in here as well, um, that wouldn't work because we'd effectively be resetting the whole thing. I think the only way that we could possibly do it is by having the GPIO parts of it in their own individual structure and then talk to those structures using a trait or behavior such as write Yeah, I think that is normally called drop iPost. iPost says, I wonder if there's a function that disconnects it from old assignments. I think drop, or maybe that's what you implement on a, on a thing. Um, But here I'm thinking structurally that we're kind of doing it wrong, holding on to the pins in a structure in the USB. Almost what we want is a structure that can be either SPI or a bit banged SPI, right? And that could be part of the same structure. And that has a call called write. Because all we're doing from here is writing for those pins, aren't we? Here. So we wouldn't ever send. Yes. Effectively, what we want is the SPI interface. If we could find a way of making the bit bang SPI work, we wouldn't have this problem, of course. Because then we just keep SS as a GPIO pin, reset as a GPIO pin. But the spy parts would be wrapped in a spy interface. I remember we moved away from that before because we had problems with the type. So if we look at that again, sorry. I was looking at something earlier. Um, what was I looking at? I was looking at something or other using SPI. Uh, hold on. And they had a type that they used. So say we had something in here. So say we didn't have SCK and Mozzie. Say we had something in here called SPI. This is what we were trying to do before, right? And we had problems defining what SPI was. Ah, there's a twinkle. Have you come to say hello to everyone? Oh, you're looking for food. Should have guessed. Um, so here what I'm thinking is that that could be, hold on, I don't, we, have, we don't have spy here do we? That could be of type STM32. Uh -huh. Oh, damn it! I hate it when that happens. I need that, don't I? So here we have that as 
Okay. Um, what do we have to ask? Supply. Colon. By SP Maybe I'm hitting the same problem I had before that there is no spy. And then Then you have something like Oh, this is complicated. Well, bear with me. I don't know if this is actually going to work. I think we're going to hit the same bloody problem with spy. Uh, hold on. Uh, Uh, what you want, Twinks? You want to say hello? Oh, hello, folks. Have you been eating? Let's go through the door again. Come on. I want here hmm. this pie and then STM32 F. Oh, I've lost an X. Um, Sinus T. M. No. Is there an SPI? Colon. No, maybe it's not in the how. Maybe is it pack? Is it doing something like that? Is that the way to do it? Maybe. And then you select the spy. Uh, I can't even remember what it is. Something like that, say. And then. Hold on. Hmm. 
There is, there's enabled, but no disabled. And then we get into this horrible thing here. But it won't accept disabled here. I'm looking at an example that shows disabled. But even if that did do disabled, which I don't think it does. Uh, Damn it. Yeah, it doesn't like that. But it has, I, I saw a signature, something like that, right? But it's not having this because this must be a different version. But we've still got a problem here. So spy itself is defined as containing other types. But specifically, there's a different type for spy one spy two spy three likewise if we were using a bit bang spy we can't use that here as well because that would have that would be part of the bit bang how are you with me so we'd be back to bloody square one Because this bit would be unique, whether it was a bit bang spy or the other spy. What we want here is behavior, right? If it was spy behavior, then we'd be okay. But the trouble is, once you have spy behavior here, the problem you, you then have is when it tries to create this USB serial, it says that that has no size type. No static size type at compile time. Remember, we went around that curve before. Can you blend your behavior by selectively implementing your own? Yes, but it's not just about having a behavior. You can't just have a behavior there. The behavior has to act on something I post. And the question is, um, how do you hold the thing that you call that behavior upon? And that's what I'm messing up with. Because this needs to be allocated at compile time. And that's what I'm missing. Um, and it just takes us back around in a circle. But yeah, effectively, what we really like is a spy behavior here that we can call on. You would instantiate your implementation. In one mode or t'other, and then drop it. Potentially. Yeah, what you effectively would need is a dummy or ideally what you need here is that <laughs> well that but it won't have that as we found out earlier
Oh, sorry. Let me give it a browser. Yeah. That's kind of what we need. <laughs> But it won't let us do that because we tried that here with these EPIO types, subtypes. But these are commas, so maybe we can. Hold on. Uh, hold on just a cotton picking minute. Can we do that? it was complaining that there weren't commas that last time because it was types in types but in this case it's not types in types maybe that gives enough information at compile time to work uh do we have to actually pass one in in order for that to work so we'd have to right let's just temporarily disable this God, the moment I disable that, I'm going to have to disable all the other code. What happens if I just leave this? I mean, it's going to complain about the constructor, isn't it? But does it complain about having that there? Here we go. Not allowed in type signatures. Hmm. There, stirred. <laughs> You kind of fool it, Captain. Um, hmm. That's what it needs. And if I do that, it doesn't know what my MP are, right? Oh, no, I just forgot the comma there. I don't like that. Cannot find type I in this scope. Yeah, um, once we start going down here, we then get into the issue where we have to do here we have to do something like this don't we um right and if we do that we then have to define what those are there when on the constructor yeah if we do that on the constructor, it expects them in here. 
And then we end up getting that other issue that we had because we end up fixing these there. And I, in this case, would be by, um, I guess, spy one, spy two, etc. Um, I mean, what you probably want is some other type that did this. So you have, say, uh, a struct, right? Uh, called my spy, right? I don't know if they call them dummies or what I post. Maybe that's what phantoms are or whatever. I've seen the word phantom used. So here we pass in a my spy that has these types. But what I do is I dynamically create this. Yeah. Maybe can this mutate? So I could have two versions of these. I could have two my spy structs, one that represented Bitbang, one that represented um, um, the running spy. So then I could have a function in here called switch or something. called switch spy or new spy or replace spy that had this kind of function
into future <laughs> how do you replace something because you probably can't just um, reassign it can you Uh, maybe it needs to be a reference. Anonymous parameters. I don't think you can just do um, even if that was a reference. Um, Yeah, I think the type goes first, doesn't it? Oh no. Quite right. Mine bad. I don't I put a reference there and I'm not sure if that works. Um Let me get rid of reference for the moment and then we'll look at references in a sec. But I don't think I can do that, is what I was saying. I'm not sure it would let me do that. Just replace whatever the current spy is with whatever spy I've passed in. Now, the my spy I pass in can be passed in dynamically. It can be either the bit bang or the real spy, right? It would cause a borrow. Uh, yes, it will cause a borrow. Why doesn't it like this name? Okay, dust dots. Um, hmm.
what happens if I try to compile this? Will it give me a hint that I'm breaking all the rules? Um, not found in this scope. Now I think it should be name then type. So if we look at setup, type should be second. Oh, I see. That seems to want um, this. Is that going to cause a problem? Shit. Yes, it should be inside the implementation block. That is inside the implementation block replace. But we've got a bigger problem. This requires this. So we're fucked anyhow. Excuse my French. Ah! Um. Enjoy I post. We seem to end up going around in circles with these types here. Because what we want to do is slightly unusual. Mm. Can't hide that away. Ooh. Yeah, having that is as bad as having what we originally had here. There's no benefit. Ooh, dearie, dearie, dearie. I'm wondering... If maybe we need to do this somewhat differently. Maybe having the spy as part of the structure is where the mistake is. Oh.
might need a bigger restructure, I think. Yeah, because with that there, it's just going to complain. Why is it not making this? Ah, oh, yeah, it needs it there as well. Because if I have this in this way, it's not going to compile. Is it? Yeah, it can't find I. Without me putting this on top of USB serial. Um. Okay. I think I'm going to leave it there for today and then maybe carry on with this tomorrow. Um, I think we're going to need to refactor somewhat to solve this problem. Going at it like this probably isn't going to work. I was going to look at doing a larger refactor. It may be a time to do both of those at once. So what I'll probably do is do the stream, carry this on tomorrow evening. Um, so for now, let's just leave it there and then we'll look at that tomorrow evening. Thanks for joining us, folks. And I will see you soon. Ciao.